Hi everybody, it's Miss Catherine here with another STEM activity for the week. This week we are doing, I'm going to turn this down so you can see the table, our Strong Structures STEM kit uh, uh, is available at the library and uh, you can pick it up anytime. Uh, we'll go over our instructions of what we're going to need. Everything you need to make this, this one is super simple, is in the bag. All right, so what you're gonna need are three pieces of cardstock paper. Cardstock is heavier paper. Um, it's different than printer paper or paper that you would use like notebook paper at school. Um, it's a little more dense, I believe, than construction paper, but I do believe construction paper would work if you would like to do this over again at home without a kit. So we need three different shapes. I have given you three different colors. Uh, we are going to make a column that is circular and I'm going to try and make them all the same kind of size, width. I'm probably going to have to put this down and get some tape. You're going to need cardstock tape and books. We're going to test our structures to see which one is the strongest. So we're going to make our cylinder or our circular shape in this manner. I'm going to put the tape on the ends and I want the ends to be flat. The inside I'm okay with it being uh, a little not held down, you know. But I want that end right there to be flat. We'll add a couple more pieces of tape here. All right, and then I'm gonna just put one on the end, the edge here, and make that my cylinder shape. So you can see it's round. I'm gonna stand it up here. We're working with our paper from short side to short side. So not this way, but short side to short side, okay? This one, we're gonna fold in thirds. We're gonna make a triangular shape with it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, hmm, yeah, we're gonna do this. And we're going to have to finesse a little because we want the sides to be equal. If it's a triangle, our sides need to be equal. So I folded one side down and folded the other side on top of it. All right, and made three corners and we are going to tape this edge together. So we're going to lay it down here. And again, it's short side to short side of your paper. We want to make this, I'm going to put as strong as we can. So I'm going to tape the sides together, a couple pieces, and then we'll put pieces down the center. You got to finesse them so they get together. All right, we'll do another one in the center. Catch both sides, and then I'm going to put some right along, long strips along the edge. Okay. This piece has to stand up on one end, not like this, but just like our, our cylinder here. All right. All right, and that is our triangle-shaped column. And then this is gonna be a square. So we're gonna do, how are we gonna do this? We're gonna fold it in half. I hope this is how it will go. And then fold, that's one. To, yeah, fold this side to the center 
and this side to the center. So we have four folds. And then we're gonna open it up like this, okay? So you can see it is a square column. Now, tricky part is gonna be, <laughs> you know it's gonna be to tape these sides together. But very much like the triangle, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some tape, I'm gonna have it all ready here. And we are gonna tape the ends of one side together. You wanna catch this top piece, stick your tape to it, line up those edges together and tape. It gets easier as you go on. I'm gonna do the other end because the ends are the hardest it seems like. Tape on one side and then line it up and the other. We're gonna put one in the middle. Whoop, that's the wrong way to do that. On top, don't press down too hard. You wanna line up the edges and tape and then we're gonna tape along the long ways down, right? Can you see that? And put the tape on one side and then fold it over on the other side. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it does have to maintain a square shape. So your taping doesn't have to be perfect. But it is easier if you put it on one side of the paper and then fold it, maybe put your hand in and keep that structure and tape down that side, okay? I need another. I'm gonna go right to the edge. There, and fold it down. Add a little there, I'm gonna just, yeah, we won't worry too much about that. All right, so that's a square column. So we have our three columns here. And I have, of course, I have a pile of books. I've got four books here. Um, we're gonna start with, what column should we start with? I'm gonna go with the square column. Now, now the thing is, and what we're testing here is what shape will hold the most books, all right? So I'm gonna have to turn that up just a little so you can see it. What shape is gonna hold the most books? Let's start with our square. If I put a book on this square, is this column gonna hold this book? It does. Let's put another book on top of that one. It does. Well, I'm gonna run out of books and have to go get more, aren't I? Probably. Uh, it holds that. It holds that. I have a couple more over here on my table before I have to run to my bookshelf. And let's put this one on. And this one, yep, I'm gonna have to run to my bookshelf. I'll be right back. I had no idea that it was gonna hold all of those books. Stay with me, I'm coming right back. Okay, so I brought a whole pile of books back with me for my bookshelf. Let's see. Keep going, huh? There's another one. Now it's wobbling a little. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, it just made a noise. And it fell. <laughs> okay. So we put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight books on the square column. Let's do our triangle one. Let's see. All right. Triangle shape right here. Let's do the same order of books. Oh, we got, we excited the dog with the falling books. 
There's one. There's two. There's three. We're gonna do the same order, so four. I grabbed these two. Uh-oh, it's buckling. I can see on the bottom. Can you, you can't see on the bottom, but it's, it's wants to fan out. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Hmm. Oh, oh, nine is it. <laughs> Whoa. What is that? That and look at it. It it took a lot of a lot of beating there. It's all crimpled on the end. So that was almost nine. Oh, and this one didn't fare any better. I didn't notice this one until now, but that's all crumpled up too. All right, so how are you guys doing? Let's see, we've got our circular column. Let's see what happens. Let's see, we started with this book. Let me get my books a little situated here. They're falling all over the place. So I wanna go in the right order. So we need these over here. So this is one. And I'm gonna turn this here. You can see there's two, there's three, there is four, there's five, six. Oh, we didn't do that one next, did we? Yes, we did. Seven. Eight, nine, uh-oh, <laughs> there's 10. Let me turn the camera up a little. It's still working, you see? There's 10 books. There's 11 and 12. It is not buckled, it's not made a sound at all, I'm gonna make my camera come over here so you can see. Look at that, it is still standing up. It's still structurally sound. And if you can see in the background, that one buckled and then this one buckled. Let's find out why, let me tell you why. All right, so here's, We'll take our, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 books that we put on top of our circular column. Look at it, it's in perfect condition. Look at this one, it's bent and dented as is our square. So let's see why this works. The cylinder can support the most books because its walls don't have any edges. The weight of the books can be distributed out evenly over the structure. In other words, all parts of the cylinder are sharing the weight of the books. The square and the triangle collapse more easily. They shift the weight of the books to their edges and their corners, but their corners are thin, right? And they can't hold that weight, so they collapse from the pressure. The cylinder is one of the most widely used shapes in column construction. Early architectures, uh, architects in several ancient civilizations used columns in architecture, including the ancient Egypts, the Parisians, or the Persians, excuse me, the Greeks and the Romans, all right? <laughs> so that is strong structures. It's a very interesting thing when you are out looking at buildings um, that have columns for support. Uh, tell me, think about this, you know? Think about how many columns that you see in buildings that are round. 
and cylindrical instead of square. I know you're going to come to the library and say all the columns that support the library are square. You are correct. <laughs> it is it is okay. It is structurally strong, sound building. This is just more strong. Um, you'll also notice that the library is only two stories in which there are cylinder or, or um, square columns holding that structure up. Think about that too. All right, guys, this has been another <laughs> STEM project with Miss Catherine. I hope you had fun. I had a blast. Um, you have more time at home, so if you want to decorate your columns, please do that. Have fun with it um, and enjoy. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.